Are you guys already finished with everything in the Metropole? No need to prioritize me. Uh, there's just this place I really want to go check out. Feel free to get back to me once you've got everything sorted out. Great! Let's go! I've delivered packages all over, but I've never seen a mysterious fairy tale world like this before. Looks like nobody has gotten around to repairing this house yet. Ugh, even I wouldn't dare to sleep in there. It might suddenly collapse in on you. Nothing to see here either. Maybe we can find someone to ask? Aha! Uh -huh. Over there! I bet we'll find some people there. Let's go take a look! Uh-huh. I was sure there'd be people here. There once was a goddess who ruled over fate. Before she died, she left three riddles for the kingdom she had created. What? Who said that? Long story short, on this day a sentient feline, an outlander, and a uh, diminutive pixie arrived on the scene. They saw a narrow path off to the side. Okay, but which side? Yeah, if you gave ambiguous instructions like that to a Comania Express courier, They'd give you the parcel right back and tell you to write the delivery address more clearly. Despite how obvious the answer was, the perplexed pixie and the flummoxed feline struggled to work it out. Hmm. Although, perhaps a small part of the blame could be attributed to my dull narration. Alright, let's uh, try this again. <clears throat> the path on the left-hand side seemed to give off an enticing fragrance, as if to say, uh, this is the way to wealth and glory. Sounds like the start of a good story. Then what? Then what? At the end of the path, the motley crew would soon spot a secret stone room. A prophecy had once foretold of a marquee who shall one day venture inside, and thus it is named the Future Marquis Abode to Be. You like it? The Future Marquis Abode to Be? Got a nice ring to it, doesn't it? That was a little bit boastful. But before you continue, I must warn you of the danger that lies ahead. For example, under no circumstances should you sit on the chair in the center. Otherwise, the consequences could be... a bit embarrassing.
seem tired. Would you like some tea? I'll brew you some. Do you take sugar? <clears throat> so many summers, winters, springs, and falls. And now, at last, a hero hither strides. This realm knows not what lies beyond its walls. Its secrets mystify the world outside. Wait, new voices. Who are they? Golden sunlight fills the firmament. The tabletop engrosses your attempt. Perhaps, perchance, peruse these pages thence. They surely represent no ill intent. Why isn't he reading the files on the desk? Hey, Boberano, maybe quit showing off and try using words he'll actually understand. I can either rhyme like a bard, or I can curse like a sailor. And right now, Cafe, you are seriously tempting me towards the ladder! Um, Cafe, forgive me for breaking the rhyme scheme for a second, but I want to hear your take on this. So any outsider who comes in here would surely see the documents on the table, right? Unless he was visually impaired. And unless he's got tinnitus or something, captivated by the epic poetry and enthralled by the outstanding storytelling, the Outlanders knew what their next objective was. Namely, to remove the clockwork key from the raised platform up ahead. Cabe, I just realized you said we all had to speak like bars. With wood and earthenware strewn all around, the demon feline's fury can't be quelled, reducing them to rubble on the ground. Uh, no, no you don't. I wrote that line. Don't start plagiarizing me just because you can't take a bit of criticism. As strong as stone, firm as steel, the Outlander pulls, but it does not yield. This has happened many times before, but this time is different. A thought enters the Outlander's mind. Attack! Attack! First weaken the structure, then seize the treasure! Yeah, I noticed that too. It's one standard for us and another for you. That's not fair, Cafe. The attack now over! Only one final step remains! Now it is the time to seize the key! Yes! Finally! Come on, move your butts! And your lights, assuming they're still in working order. It's showtime! No hard feelings about your lack of poetic contributions? Oh, let it go! <laughs> ah! Welcome, esteemed and noble outlander. Allow us to introduce ourselves. We represent the three great clans of this realm, having been selected as its authorized historical supervisors. Our purpose being to await the arrival of one such as yourselves who shall remove the clockwork key. My name is... Your cape, he's Albizzi, and that's Bobarano, right? You've done so much talking that we can already tell you apart by your voices. Aren't we missing someone, though? The guy who led us here to begin with? Who? <clears throat> and thus was born the long-awaited fellowship, destined to uncover the truth of the past. Allow me to quote, if I may, in the history of Constellation Metropole, a new page has begun. Him. Well, there's no fourth person, so which of you is the ventriloquist? Come on, out with it. We've never heard that voice before, but he sounds like he'd be good at reading bedtime stories to children. Well, whoever it is, I don't know and I don't care. Forget about him. We have far more important things to focus on. Like, 
where our journey goes from here. That key you hold is the pivot point about which the past and present of the Metropole revolve. However, between our three clans, there is some dispute over the historical record. Each clan has its own version of history, detailing the clan's origins and the tale of the dragon of old. And unfortunately, we don't know which one is the truth. Dragon? You mean the one that's been acting up recently? Oh, no, 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 not that one, you adorable little pixie. When I say dragon of old... <laughs> he means a dragon that would be really, really old if it was still with us today, but it was defeated in ancient times. The new one has nothing to do with our clan history. Uh, was that supposed to be a joke? <clears throat> uh, anyway, so you've been waiting for someone to remove the keys so you can finally explore the truth of the past? Not just explore it, but argue incessantly about it. Honestly, I don't care that much. Cape's the one who's always bothering us about it. What we need to figure out is who resolved the dragon crisis. We have to know that before we can decide which is the Supreme Clan. The moment you removed the key from where it was lodged, you became the Honorary Marquis. We humbly beseech you, noble Outlander. Noble Traveler Marquis, we ask you to help us. You and your... Uh, your talking Puss in Boots and the pale floating pixie. Puss in Boots? Are you serious? It's better than Demon Feline, but still... Embrace it, my friend. Embrace it. Most cats don't wear boots or speak, do they? I'm not even a cat. I'm a Nekomata. Now that you know the word, I expect you to use it. Please allow me to lead you all to a sacred memorial site. It will be much easier to explain what needs to be done once we are there. This place is sacred to my clan. It's where our brave forefathers once took up arms against the dragon of old. After a bitter battle that dragged on for many days and nights, finally, our forefathers fought the dragon into submission, and it fled. They took turns, though. Some forefathers worked the day shift, while others worked the night shift. So they say, it's just a legend, though. Wait a second? Did I just hear you admit that your clan's history is just a legend? A history, legend, who cares? My clan was definitely courageous, that's the point. That's the truth. And isn't the truth what we've all been arguing about non-stop for all these years? Cape's words gave the Traveler food for thought. Could it be that the truth in a fictional world is equivalent to fiction in the real world? But that would have to wait. Apparently, Cape was not alone in his pilgrimage to this sacred site. Unwanted company had arrived. The Traveler and the Talking Cat, <clears throat> Nekomata, decided to teach them some manners. As a dutiful maid would. Spirits of my ancestors were fighting through you. It's a lot. Could be wrong. But maybe the Traveler Marquis is a lot more powerful than your ancestors. Your martial prowess and show of courage are a more vivid reenactment of my ancestors' feats that suit the modern aesthetic. Now, let's get down to business. As we all know, time is but an illusion. Time may flow line by line, page by page, or frame by frame, but usually it flows in the form of springs and gears. And that clockwork key you have in your hand can turn back time and make the past reappear. 
Well, actually, my view is that the illusion of time is more of a problem of consciousness. Gears power the body, while the body is the vessel of the conscious mind. But the mind cannot understand the dimension of time, so we experience instead an endless continuum of moments as the pinion of now turns along the rack of ages. I... I'm getting flashbacks to when I was delivering packages to the Sumeru Academia. A teacher once asked Albizzi what his greatest fear was, and he replied, dragons. Boberano was asked the same question. He replied, time, and repeated the argument we just heard. The teacher then turned to Cape and posed the same question. He replied, Boberano. The manuscript that tells the truth of the historical record, the blueprint to all of creation, the work of the great mage themselves, it can be found at the beginning of the gear rack and on the very first page of the book. Uh, Paimon didn't follow all that, but basically, you're just saying that we need to put the key in and turn it all the way back? Exactly. It is said that in the beginning, the goddess of creation took the goddess of fate's manuscript as a blueprint, placed it under the goddess of prophecy's starry realm, and generated the world from a few magic arrays. So in a few moments, when the great clockwork key turns the local time here back to the very beginning, we will restore the magic arrays back to their original configurations. Hold on, isn't stealing part of the blueprint of creation a little dangerous? Also, how are we supposed to know the original configurations of the magic arrays? Ah, uh, well, the general shapes of the configurations have been passed down over the ages. They now form the family crests of each of our clans. So you'll just need to reference my family crest and join the dots accordingly. To address your other concern, when the house has already been built, do you really think that taking away the construction crew and blueprint will cause it to collapse? The Traveler Marquis prepares to insert the Great Clockwork Key into the nearby keyhole. <laughs>